Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So another sculpting video for today and I'm going to go through the sculpting process of sculpting this tiger. It's part of my new tiger collection that's upcoming and this one has a non-movable jaw. I have one that's coming that with a movable jaw but this one is going to be an orange Siberian tiger and the other one's going to be a white tiger with the movable jaw. But I'm going to be trying to do movable ears with this. So um, yeah, it'll have a few different features for each doll. Uh, so I wanted to make it a bit different. All right, so basically the core of this sculpt is an aluminium ball, uh, an aluminium foil ball um, armature. And that basically bulks out majority of the sculpture. So I always tend to do this with any thicker sculpture that I do or a lot of my heads, I tend to bulk it out with aluminum foil as the core. And for, there's a number of reasons for doing this. And uh, one is that it makes the sculpture a lot lighter. Um, so you, you need to be careful of weight when you're building a, an art doll. So it's always good to have less weight on your art doll. It also uses less product, uh, so if you have majority of it as a aluminium ball core, you don't have to use as much polymer clay. And it also, you can't really have a really thick polymer clay thing because at the end of the day, because it's so thick, it, the heat can't penetrate and cure the uh, polymer clay. So you don't want to make it too thick um, because it just won't cure. So the polymer clay that I am using for this sculpture is Sculpey Original. It is the softest Sculpey you can get. There's heaps of other polymer clays you can uh, have a go with, but I just like to use Sculpey Original because I like to work with softer clays because I work quite fast when I sculpt things. So I like to be able to just sort of mash it around. <laughs> um, but I personally like sculpting with monster clay but it doesn't go hard and apologies for the cat's tail let's see what I'm doing um uh, yeah I personally like using monster clay because I like sculpting with softer things but yeah like I said it doesn't go hard because it's a wax based clay so I only really sculpt things with it that I'm going to mold and cast in resin everything else I use Sculpey original to sculpt in but there's other bits of Sculpey other brands of Sculpey that you can use so you can get Sculpey original like this one you can get super Sculpey which is the beige colored one and that Sculpey is really great for um noses and tongues and stuff like that or you can get Sculpey firm but um yeah I can go through a video if you like on the different types of Sculpey that's available and what the differences are so let me know in the comments if you're interested in something like that all right so you can see I've mapped out a lot of the tiger head here and it's really just doing a rough sculpt to begin with and then sort of refining all the pieces once you've got that basic shape and I always have reference images up on my computer at all different angles to make sure I'm sculpting things uh, the right way. So I'm basically sculpting around the snout area and I wanted to get that um, the lip bit on the side of the snout bright um, and yeah get the get the nose area right as well because when you look at big cats they have subtle differences and I think if you don't get those subtle differences right then they end up looking like a different type of big cat. Um, so it's, yeah, it's always good just to take time and reference those images. So one of my favorite things to use uh, clay rolled out in these little worm forms and I think they're a really great starting base for a lot of details. Um, I can do also a separate video on like what type of things you can do by creating worms like this. So. Um, I'll definitely put that on my list, but I use this process for a lot of things and as you can see here I'm using it as like those little gum markings on the lips and just working them into the clay to make it look really realistic um, and I also use it for like the eye area for the lids and stuff so I think it works really well for a lot of different detailing. For the nose, I'm using Sculpey, Super Sculpey, which is that beige one, beige one that I talked about earlier. Uh, and like I said, it's really good for making things that are a bit translucent and have that uh, pinky 
tone underneath. You can always add uh, colors to it once it's baked or even before you bake it. So you can add like pastels and stuff like that to achieve like a more pink look or um, you can add like a wash over the top of it once it's baked, which is what I normally do. So I'm just basically cutting out a shape of the nose that I'm happy with and I'm using a small little blade to do it. Um, probably use a different, like a proper blade, not just a, a, a stump of one like I am. Uh, but I'm basically carving out what I want the nose to look like and then I'll be putting it on top of that um, original head sculpture and blending it in with some more Sculpey original. Just being careful not to go over the beige coloured Sculpey because I want to keep that translucent look to the nose. That's why I'm using this type of Sculpey. And you'll see me use this Sculpey more in the tiger that has the movable jaw. So I used that clay a lot for um, inside like the roof of the mouth and also the tongue area. But yeah, you'll see that over um, when I do the video for that and also on my Patreon where you can uh, see some progress in images. And I had I posted a video about um, how the movable jaw works over on there. So if you want to know how the movable jaw works, head over there. There's a video up of me talking about how I've created it on the, the white tiger. So once that's done and I'm pretty happy with the way the muzzle is looking, I can start working on the eye area. So the eyes that I'm using are glass cabochon eyes. Um, I have some of these eyes in my shop in different sizes, so check that out. I plan to add more in the future. But um, yeah, I think these eyes work really well and I think glass eyes give a bit more of a realistic look to the doll. I also do them in my resin sculptures as well, or my resin dolls as well, where I cast the glass eyes inside of the resin head. And I have a tutorial in my shop about how, to, how I do that. So if you want to know, you can check that out there. It's in my shop at creaturesandat.com. But um, yeah, you see another example of that worm uh, clay that I was talking about earlier, how I'm making the eyelids with that worm. Um, yeah, and I think it works really well to sort of create um, expressions uh, around eyes as well. So I also have that video on my to-do list on how to sculpt eyes specifically and how to create different types of expressions with the way you position um, that piece of clay. So it, it's really good and um, it creates a really subtle change, creates a different look. Uh, to the face so I wanted this these tigers to have more of a, a stoic look to them so I played around with the eyelids a little bit to um, create a look or a gaze that I felt was right for the type of sculpture um, so this I mean you can lose a lot of time with playing around with different eye expressions but um, yeah it's really worth the experience to play around with it so definitely give it a go So basically the rest of most of the video is just a lot of refining process and making sure I've got the right angles on the face for it to actually look like a tiger. Because uh, sometimes it can very easily look like a lion. So um, yeah, it's I, I take a little bit of time to make sure I've got all the angles correct and um, the way bits of the forehead slope and the bits of the way the nose projects out, I, you need to make sure that it's really um, accurate. So I've taken a bit of time just to refine everything and I only really added a detail for detailing around the eyes, um, the nose and around the lip area. And this is basically as like a guide um, to where I put the faux fur on top of it. And it also enables me to blend it in a bit easier when there's um, like little crevices and stuff. And I think it makes the sculpt look a bit more finished and uh, I can see what it's going to look like once it's been completed. So, I mean, it's not a necessary step, but um, I, I, I do like to do it. Sometimes I do the whole head um, and sometimes I don't. It just really depends how I feel at the time. But um, yes, I haven't sculpted the ears because I'm going to be doing different types of ears for this one, like I said at the start of the video. So I'm going to try and make them poseable. I have a couple of different options that I want to try. 
So one is going to be um, like a clay ball and socket one and the other one's just going to be um, a fabric type. Uh, so I'll play around with them and I'll probably post some experiments over my Patreon if you're interested in what happens with that. But uh, yeah, pretty much that's it for this video. I'm applying a little ledge around the back of the doll or back of the head. So basically this is for somewhere for the faux fur to attach to, um, which I, I, I like to do this because I don't really like putting the faux fur it's a little bit hard to attach it to something that doesn't have a ledge and make it like a smooth transition so I always generally put a ledge on my um, heads so I can um, have like a smooth transition from the faux fur to the fabric faux fur um, but yeah that's pretty much for the, it for this video uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me sculpt this little tiger head uh, all of this tiger collection will be available to my patreons first so if you want to nab one of these dolls or any of the artwork that will be featured in the collection head over to my patreon any tier is able to access early access to anything and uh, yeah, heaps of videos and tutorials over there so check it out and find something that you like there's also a discount a 10% discount available to my $10 and up tiers um, so keep that in mind if you're going to buy something uh, anyway I'll leave it there and thank you to my patrons for supporting me I really appreciate it um, and also you can check me out on Instagram Facebook, TikTok at Creatures of Nat and my shop at CreaturesofNat.com and I'll catch you in the next one bye <laughs>